Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. And in this video, I'm going to try to answer a few of the questions you had in the previous videos I did yesterday. Also, I'm going to mention a few things I forgot to mention in those videos as well. So we're looking at XRP on the seven-day chart. Nothing has changed since yesterday. We're still going sideways, sitting here just under 50 cents. And I look at the DXY and we're actually starting to see the DXY fall. So maybe we'll see more recovery happen later this week. And right now we have people saying the bottom is absolutely in. Go all in on crypto now before it's too late. While other people are saying we still need one major pullback to happen before we take off. But nobody really knows for sure. And you know, it's like you just sit back and wait to see what happens next. That's where we are right now. This comes from Casper Kai. Digital assets changing hands from the weak to the strong, the poor to the rich, the rookies to the veterans, all right before the halving. The four-year cycle is basically scripted, yet people still getting shaken out. Marker, mark, market makers want your liquidity. Learn to play the game. And I see this happening all day long. You know, people just selling. And it's because they don't know what they're holding when they're holding something like XRP. You know, I talked to somebody who bought XRP on X through DMs yesterday. And they weren't, they didn't even understand that a new financial system is coming. And they didn't understand what XRP is actually built to do. Move the world's money. And now I'm starting to realize why so many people are hating on XRP right now. It's because they don't understand XRP. Sure, people that have been holding for a long period of time, they're frustrated. They want to see their investment take off already. I'm right there with all of you. But, you know, newer investors, they don't really understand. Most of them got here because a friend of theirs told them, listen, this cryptocurrency is going to hit high numbers. You want to get invested in this cryptocurrency now. But they still don't understand what they're holding. XRP investors will be legends, similar to Amazon or Apple investors from the early days. Patience pays. And absolutely, if you continue holding XRP, you will become a legend. You will be one of those people out there talking on social media in the coming years, very wealthy, saying how you got rich off of XRP. It's going to happen, but you have to stay patient until it happens. The Bank of International Settlements, the BIS, just released a 44-page working paper detailing their vision for the Finternet. Multiple interconnected ecosystems, much like the internet, but for financial networks. Their unified ledger, very reminiscent of Q&T, is outlined through the document. Remember, Q&T has already been confirmed by the BIS for CBDC interoperability via Project Rosalind. Here are some of the most exciting quotes. They're talking about APIs, a cornerstone of the system, the unified interledger protocol, network of networks. And, you know, people right away would say, no, they're talking about XRP. I got to remind you, these cryptocurrencies are not fighting each other. Q&T is absolutely part of this. It's the glue that's going to hold the entire new financial system together. It's an operating system for blockchain. So Q&T is absolutely going to connect to XRP. It's going to connect to XLM, XDC, HBAR, and the rest of these ISO cryptocurrencies. And I just mentioned this in a Q&T video the other day. But what's the one thing that the internet is really lacking? Payments. It's still tied to the broken SWIFT system. 
And, you know, we know the back end is absolutely horrible when it comes to payments. What fixes it? Crypto, DLT fixes that. And that's why I said, you know, when you're holding something like XRP, we are going to see the internet of value and it's absolutely coming. Remember, the internet was just a fad, folks. You know, back then, they thought the internet was not even going to be around today. So past predictions, phones won't catch on. Cars are just a fad. Horses forever. Only five computers globally. The internet is doomed to collapse. Crypto is dead. What's your thought on this? Video by Coinbase. Now you have the internet on your phone in your pocket. Everything that they ever said was dead seems to be the future. You take notice to that? And like I said, crypto is the next step for the internet because it brings everything together. And that's where we're headed. And the next thing is going to be AI and crypto coming together inside the new financial system. I talked about this yesterday. Ripple CTO David Schwartz talked about not being a billionaire. Not yet. But he said he holds one to 10 million XRP. Now, this is how much value David sees in XRP. Ironically, at the time, Schwartz chose a salary and a 2% share in Ripple over the XRP cryptocurrency, which he helped create. Although he later highlighted that choosing a share in the company over XRP was probably a pretty big mistake. He could have received around 500 million XRP tokens, which it would have been worth a fortune at the peak of XRP's rally. Now, I would love to see David's exit strategy on XRP. What are the price points that David would be selling at? That would give us a great idea on where the price of XRP is going to go in the future. And a lot of you would right away say, well, David Schwartz already said it has to be $10,000 per XRP. But that's not what David actually said. He said, he referenced it as in buying a house. And we are absolutely going to be buying things with XRP in the future. But you couldn't buy a house now. It wouldn't be feasible to buy a house with XRP when it's sitting at 50 cents. However, Buying a house with a $500 XRP, that would make some sense. $1,000 would make more sense. $5,000 more sense still. That's what I'm saying. And I would love to see what David's thoughts are on that. I think he does probably picture XRP reaching five digits at some point in the future. Brad Garlinghouse previously said that he was ready to take the fight to the Supreme Court. Now, this would be our worst nightmare come true. Former SEC litigator Linda Stewart recently predicted that the Ripple case could go all the way to the Supreme Court in order to determine what makes a crypto asset a security. We gotta hope this does not happen. Do you know how long this would be drug on? Forever in the Supreme Court. Hopefully, Ripple and the SEC come to a settlement sometime in May. I just thought I would mention this, though, because this could possibly happen as well. Ripple's XRP powers all Tranglo real-time transactions. Now, a lot of people say, well, we get all these big announcements. We know they're utilizing XRP. Why is the price not moving? Well, Chad Steingrabber says the reason XRP price is not affected by today's partnerships and ODL payment utility use described below. All use of XRP globally today is essentially over-the-counter trading that does not touch public crypto exchanges. Crypto exchanges currently today determine the price. Traditional finance cannot use crypto exchanges like Kraken or Binance due to regulations. Bank of America is not going to source XRP through Kraken. Sorry to burst your bubble. I think they might be able to get it through Uphold though. We've seen that talked about in the past. So we seem to be in a pickle, right? 
they're using it, but not publicly. So how does the price go up by utility? The answer is simple. It doesn't, at least for now. It doesn't matter what the price is. It works regardless. The difference is volume versus supply. The volume of transfers that depends on XRP is key because obviously millions of dollars per day is much different than trillions of dollars per day. So when volumes do pick up due to business dependency, they will demand more XRP because they need it to send XXX amount of dollars. When they demand more, they will start acquiring XRP from any source they can get it, including the public, including us. That comes down to us lending our XRP and getting passive income from it. But you know, as demand really picks up, it takes me back to another question a lot of you had. You talked about a three-digit XRP, but how would it happen? Would it happen fast? You know, I always thought it would be like a flip of the switch moment. We would see XRP gradually moving up based on projects that are building out on the XRP ledger. At the same time, tokenization would be picking up as well. Then all of a sudden, cross-border payments goes live from one CBDC to another all around the world and the price would just spike very fast like an overnight event like a flip of the switch moment we see banks talking about flipping the switch we see the BIS, the imf have said it in the past christine lagarde talks about it like in waves when it comes to iso wave one wave two wave three so i do believe it will happen very quick and anybody that's still sitting on the sidelines, not investing, they're just going to be left behind. If, they're, if you're not holding XRP at that moment, you will be priced out very quick. That's what I see happening at some point in the future. And it's the same reason that people have talked about the flip of the switch moment inside of, you know, XRP community is because it goes back to the IMF talking like that, the BIS talking like that, banks talking like that. But you know, that's what I always pictured. And as time goes on, you could see everything coming together. All the ripple rails are put in place everywhere around the world. And at one moment, all of a sudden, XRP is going to start running on those rails and it's going to happen very fast. Now, yesterday, I talked about Bitcoin, and some of you said, come on, Rich, stop hating on Bitcoin. This is why right here, Bitcoin and Ethereum will specifically not be covered by Mika regulations as they do not meet the standards of e-money tokens, asset referenced, or utility tokens. You see it right here. And Mika is going into every single country. They might call it some something else, like u.s crypto regulations or australia's crypto regulations but they're all going to be similar to mika because every single country has to have the same regulations or cross-border payments won't work in the future so if mika is saying that bitcoin and ethereum pretty much are worthless where do we go from here with bitcoin what what is going to prop up the price of Bitcoin into the future? It's definitely not going to be Tether because Tether is on its way out as well. And I know a lot of retail investors are buying Bitcoin, hoping to get rich. They're working hard, just like the rest of us. You know, they go to work all week and they put some money in Bitcoin, hoping to get rich. But I think this is going to be the last major run up on Bitcoin. And that's why I warn people, Bitcoin has no utility. The world is pushing towards utility. I would get invested in utility and sit back, stay patient, and just wait to get rich. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.